you are watching Redicon. This case shows wedge fracture of L1 with reduction of vertebral body height. Care must be taken not to miss the superior and plate compressions which can be very subtle. If there is a fracture present then it is our job to identify a single column wedge compression fracture from a double column burst fracture. Involvement of two columns or more than 50% reduction of vertebral body height has a high risk for collapse and should be fixed. A radiologist has to comment on the grade of fracture, possibility of pathological fracture or any retropulsion. If there is retropulsion and cord damage, then the possibility of nervous damage must be documented before surgery. Otherwise, it can cause legal complications after the surgery. A sixth case shows two fractures. Both images, there are vertebral body fractures. It is important to exclude the pathological fracture. But how do we do that? What are the differentiating features between B9 and pathological fractures? A good way to differentiate between osteoporotic fractures and pathological fractures is to think of them as sponge or butter bar or soap bar. The sponge is hollow with lack of mineralization and it can collapse easily without any volume shift. However, a butter bar or a soap bar can lose its shape, can get distorted, however does not lose its volume which merely transfers to another place more often in spinal canal and can cause compression of the nerve roots or cord itself. We are still discussing B or vertebral bodies of spine MRI. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel and click on the notification bell for new courses. For more modules and radiology CMAs, please visit www.radicon.org.